Hello, Curran here. This video is about the inputs for a data visualization, namely data and tasks. I'm going to present some slides that were authored by Tamara Munzner to go along with her book, Visualization Analysis and Design. Broadly speaking, there are three data set types that you'll encounter in data visualization. Tables, networks, and spatial data. Within tables, you'll encounter um, tables where rows of the table represent a single item or event. This is typically called, you know, tabular data. And you'll also encounter multi-dimensional tables or data cubes. And these look a lot like tabular data, but what makes them different is that they're actually aggregated data. Networks are data sets that have nodes and links that connect nodes together. A subset of, you know, network data sets are trees, where there's a clear hierarchical structure where nodes are children of other nodes, which are ultimately children of one root node of the tree. With spatial data sets, you know, these are data sets where there's an element of the data that maps onto the Earth in some form or another. One form could be position, where there is latitude, longitude points that could appear on a map. Another type of spatial data set deals with geographic identifiers like countries or states, for example. So these are the three broad data set types, tables, networks, and spatial. Let's try to identify the data set types for the data sets that we've looked at already, the religion by country data and also the migrant deaths data. This data set contains population for each combination of country and religion. So in a way, you could consider this an aggregation. I mean, this is the sum total of all people in this whole category of religions. I mean, there are subcategories. And in this whole category of spatial area, I mean, there are smaller subdivisions than countries. So I would consider this one actually multidimensional data, as in a data cube that's aggregated over country and religion. And the type of aggregation is summation. This data set, I would say, is a multi-dimensional table. Let's look at the migrant deaths data. In this data set, each row represents an individual event. Each row does not really represent an aggregation. It's sort of an event that happened at a point in time, uh, at a point in space, one particular point on the globe. This data set could be considered tabular data, where each row represents a single item. This data set also has a spatial aspect to it. It does have geographic points corresponding to each row of the table. So those are our data set types for these two example data sets that we looked at. Within tabular data, there are a couple of attribute types that provide a broad taxonomy for visualization design. And these are categorical and ordered. And within ordered, there's ordinal and quantitative. And by the way, here, attribute is the same concept as a column of a table. Categorical attributes are attributes that have distinctly different things inside of them. And one example is, you know, different shapes. These are just different things that don't have an intrinsic ordering between them. Ordinal attributes, for example, um, t-shirt size, small, medium, and large, these are distinctly different things, but they have a natural ordering between them. You know, you could compare each one of these and say small is definitely smaller than medium, and medium is smaller than large. Quantitative attributes are 
attributes that are just numbers, that are quantities, that are, you know, very specific quantities like 5.2 or 6.8. Those are quantitative attributes. So those are the three broad categories of attributes, categorical, ordinal, and quantitative. Let's identify the attribute types that appear in these two tables. In this religion by country data set, our attributes are country, religion, and population. What type of attribute is country? The values here are not numbers, so we can rule out quantitative. And there's no intrinsic ordering between these countries. They're just distinctly different things with no natural ordering, so these could be considered um, categorical. Country is a categorical attribute. What about religion? What type of attribute is that? This is also categorical because these are distinctly different things and there's no natural intrinsic ordering between them. What about population? What type of attribute is that? This one is definitely quantitative. It's a number and it's not, uh, the number is not a, like an ID code or anything, it represents a quantity, so population is a quantitative attribute. Now let's look at the migrant deaths data. What type of attribute is cause of death? This is also categorical. These are just distinctly different things with no natural ordering. What about the number of people dead and missing. This is quantitative because these are numbers that represent quantities. What about date? What type of attribute is that? Well, these dates appear to represent days. They're down to the resolution of days. And one day comes before another day. So there's a natural ordering here, but they are distinctly different. They're not quantities. So I would say date is an ordinal attribute. What about this attribute here, location? And these are strings that, you know, they just sort of describe the location. There's no natural ordering between these. They're not quantities. So this is a categorical attribute, location. What about latitude? What kind of attribute is that? What about longitude? I mean, what about latitude and longitude combined? If you look at latitude or longitude, you may be tempted to say quantitative, and I guess you could sort of treat them like that. But when you combine them together, they are just different unique points on the globe. Thinking about the dates and latitude and longitude sort of brings into focus this notion that there are special cases that have um, unique considerations in visualizations, namely time and space. Points in time, regions of time, points in space, and regions of space. I like to think about it like this. You've got space, time, and quantity, and for each of those you could have a point or a region. So let's consider a point in space. This is latitude, longitude. For example, my current location, where I am right now. A point in space, or rather an attribute, or combination of attributes that represents a point in space, could be considered categorical because they're distinct, different locations that don't have any natural ordering. You could also have a region of space, and in a data table, these typically appear as a geographic identifier, like a country name, a state name, or, or a county name, or also an ID. This type of attribute is also categorical. When you're dealing with time, you could have a point in time, like an instant 
of time, for example, right now. This is common if you've got, say, uh, timestamps in a database, like Unix timestamps down to the millisecond. This could be considered an instant of time. Because an instant of time is conceptually a point rather than a region, you can compare distances between the points, and they are effectively a quantity. So this could be considered as a quantitative attribute. If you've got a region of time, though, an interval, like this year, this month, this week, or today, these are regions of time that have instants of time as a beginning point and as an ending point. And these can be aggregated over. They're, they are distinctly different things, and they have a natural ordering, so these could be considered ordinal. Years, months, days, weeks, these are ordinal attributes. When you're dealing with quantities, you could have a value, like 5.2, like the current temperature, for example. This is straight up quantitative, uh, quantitative attribute. But also when you're dealing with quantities, you could potentially have intervals, like, for example, 5 to 10 years old. I mean, 5 and 10 are, are qu quantities, they're values, but an interval, you know, you could have 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15. These are distinctly different things that have a natural ordering, so intervals could be considered ordinal attributes. So that's our consideration of points versus regions over space, time, and quantity. Coming back to our analysis of the migrant deaths data set, we can say now with confidence that latitude and longitude, this is a categorical attribute that has a geospatial interpretation. It can be placed as a point on the map. If we scroll over and again look at the date attribute, it really depends on how you want to think about this. I mean, if you consider days as the highest resolution you can get for a point in time, then it could be considered as a quantitative attribute. But if you really consider it as days, which is really what it is here, for example, two things happen on the same day, they don't happen at the same instant of time, looking at it this way, this attribute could be considered as describing regions of time, therefore, this date attribute could be considered as ordinal, which I think was our original analysis, so we've just confirmed that. Also, the quarter, like the second quarter of 2016, this could also be considered an ordinal attribute, and also year. Also, the month of the year. These are all representations of regions of time at different resolutions. This concludes our analysis of the attribute types of this data set. In addition to data, tasks are a very important input to the whole process of data visualization. By tasks, I mean like, what questions are you trying to answer? Or what questions do you want your readers of the visualization to be able to answer by looking at the visualization or interacting with the system. What is the problem that you're trying to solve here? What decisions are you trying to make? What outcomes are you hoping for by creating a visualization of this? What story do you want to tell? What tasks should the viewer be able to perform? These are all questions that you should be asking yourself at the outset of a data visualization project, because these can help you decide uh, between alternatives, for example, when you're making visualizations. If you're going into a data visualization project without any concrete tasks in mind, it's um, sort of risky business because there's like a million possible ways you could visualize any given data set, and you need these tasks or you need this direction to help pare down the sort of combinatorial explosion of, of possible ways of visualizing a data set. 
That's all for our discussion of the inputs for data visualization, data and tasks. Take care.